Hello. Yesterday, I talked a bit about negativity bias, that pesky habit we have of seeing the worst in things rather than the best. And I introduced you to Rick Hansen, a psychologist and researcher in the neurology behind why we do what we do, and author of Hardwiring Happiness and Buddha's Brain, two books I highly recommend. So this is a big topic, but basically our brains are still primarily, primarily wired for survival, long after we have to worry about saber-toothed tigers jumping out of the bushes at us. We're finely tuned to anything that could have a negative effect on our survival. As a parent, I'm finely tuned to anything that could threaten my child. A friend mentions she's afraid to speak up in a meeting because she fears retaliation from a rival. Understanding that these alarm bells go off in our heads all day long, that they're really there to protect us is helpful. When we can bring awareness to how we respond to these threats, we can begin to gain control over it. When our minds begin to feel threatened, we can take a breath and see that threat more clearly, leaving us less freaked out and able to deal with it through our rational mind. Now, of course, there are still panic times that are important to have. We hear a car coming down the road towards us. We may need to jump out of the way, or maybe it's just a delivery driver. It's that split second attention that allows us to make a rational decision before we run away. In our humdrum daily day-to-day lives, we still experience these alarms on a scale that really is pretty amazing. Looking outside my window right now, it's pouring down rain. Rain that we need badly in the Bay Area, but my mind drifts to the inevitable flooding and mudslides that might come with it, that the gutter outside my office window needs to be cleaned, or that the water could back up and cause trouble with the rafters. So I take a breath. The rain is good. We need it, and I'm grateful for the rain. I can fix the gutter when the rain stops and be ready for the next rain. It's cutting down the fire danger, which we've been worrying about. I love the sound of the rain on our roof. And just taking a moment to enjoy that, the urgency of this particular alarm is past. Turning our minds to recognize where the negative is coming from is step one. Then recognizing the opportunity or positive benefits helps get us our head back on track. Barbara Fredrickson tells us that positive emotions broaden our scope of attention, cognition, and action, and build physical, intellectual, and social resources that we can rely on. We just need to make that break. We need to make that stop to make sure that the way that we're responding to it is the appropriate way to respond to it. Learning to shift our attention toward the positive takes practice. So grab a piece of paper and write down every single positive thing you can think of right now. The more you can manage the attention you put on things that make you feel good, the less the negative ones will be overblown. Make a choice to check in with yourself periodically throughout the day. Where's your head? Are you in negativity bias right now? Is there some positive aspect that you could bring to it? Think about it and see if you see a difference throughout your day. Thank you.